Hello, in previous videos I talked about how to calculate the gradient magnitude and the gradient direction. So this is actually useful in detecting uh, edges, how sharp they are, and their direction. So to know or to get an idea about where an edge is and how sharp it is, we actually use the gradient magnitude or something called the gradient magnitude map. So this is an example of it. Uh, this is the gradient magnitude map of a road. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want to explain the difference between the gradient magnitude map and the edge map. So, uh, there is actually two main differences. The first is that the gradient magnitude map is actually a grayscale image. So for an 8-bit image, I would have um, 256 different gray levels. For example, here on this lane, you can see that is, uh, it is more white than the edges uh, detected here, which tend to be uh, gray in their color. So this is actually not the case with, with the, uh, the edge map. We have only two colors or two possible values. The first is the zero or the black color. The second is the one or 255 uh, or again the white color. So we have only two possible values. This is the first difference. The second difference is that the edges detected uh, on a gradient magnitude map can actually be more than one pixel thick. Whereas on an edge map, the edges are just one pixel thick. So this is obvious for you, I think. Uh, you can see here that the uh, thickness of this edge is bigger than this one here just because um, it is one uh, pixel thick. So what we tend to do after calculating the gradient magnitude map is to use it to find out or to figure out um, an edge map because uh, we usually do not uh, need uh, to know how thick an edge is. We just uh, need to know uh, where the edge it is and this is done actually by the edge map. Now what I'm gonna do next is uh, to explain some techniques to detect the or to establish um, an edge map from the um, gradient magnitude map and maybe from uh, other things. So for that let's get back to our one-dimensional image, which all has always been um, a good way to simplify concepts. Now, in a previous video, I said that this is an ideal edge, where the transition from zero to one is instantaneous. And I also said this is, that this is impossible uh, to get on a real image so an edge that is closer to reality is this one. Now for the sake of explaining um, how to detect, uh, how to establish an edge map, um, I'm gonna use this edge which is uh, more closer to reality than this one. So it's something like this. So it's like a smoothed version of this edge and this is uh, more real than uh, both of these two. So uh, of course I, I assume that uh, I'm working for one-dimensional images and on a continuous level not discrete. So this is my one-dimensional image this is the x-axis and this x right here do not confuse it with y axis for two-dimensional images. This is just represent the uh, level of 
the, uh, the, the level of intensity. So this is IFX, my image. Now, what I'm going to do is to calculate the first derivative. And again, as I said in the past, the first derivative is used to detect uh, edges. So what I'm going to get here is an impulse that is as wide as this transition. So it's going to be something like that. So this is the second derivative of my one-dimensional image. And the magnitude of, um, of that impulse, of course, depends upon the slope of this edge or the sharpness of this edge. The higher the slope, the higher the magnitude of that derivative. Now, what I'm going to do next is to take a step further in and calculate the second derivative. And to calculate the second derivative, um, it's actually calculating the derivative of the first derivative. So what I'm going to get here is in this position, I'm going to get a positive impulse, something like that. And the reason uh, for this positive impulse is because the change here is done from a lower value to a higher value. So the change is positive, therefore the impulse here is positive. Whereas in this case here, the change is being done from a higher value to a lower value. Therefore, I'm going to get here a negative impulse. And of course, to get from a positive impulse to a negative impulse, we have uh, necessarily to pass from zero. So this is the zero. And the interesting thing is this uh, zero crossing is actually the, uh, can represent the center of the edge. So the idea is by using this zero crossing property, zero crossing property of the second derivative, we can detect uh, or establish the edge map. So the process will then become very simple. Uh, so the edge map the edge map of the image ix is actually just can be just established by assigning or associating the value of one or white color with uh, in the position of the zero crossing and black everywhere else which is zero mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you.